As you know, every religion has its myth of creation, and the Shintoism is no exception. According to Shintoism, the islands that constitute the Japanese archipelago are the babies of Izanami, a goddess or kami of the Japanese mythology. She made these babies along with her husband, which also happens to be her brother. The islands weren't the only babies that Izanami and Izanagi had. They also created everything on the surface of the islands, such as rivers, rocks, trees, mountains and everything else. All of these came out from between Izanami's legs, quite literally, and one day this led to a tragic incident. I debated fiercely with myself about how I should begin my account on Japan's history, with a mythology or with facts. I ended up deciding to start with mythology for two reasons. The first one is because if I don't do it now, I don't know when I will have the chance. Because there is not a better moment to talk about the creation of the world than at the beginning. The second reason is because I already knew beforehand where to get my information from. Before creating this channel, I had read a book about Japanese mythology, which is called the Kojiki. This is not just a book, but is also the first Japanese book on Japanese mythology that was ever created. So I already had a lot of information in my hands, and I knew what I needed to find to complement said information. As you know, or maybe you don't, and that is why I'm here, the two most important sources of information when it comes to Japanese mythology are the books called Jiki and Nihon and Nihon Shoki. These two works, created in the 8th century under the Yamato state, recount the origin of the Japanese archipelago and its people and legitimize the divine ancestry of the imperial family, claiming that its members are descended from the grandson of Amaterasu, the sun deity, which is a very important figure. In addition to these books, there is also Shintoshu, which was created sometime during the 14th century which is a collection of writings that tells the origin of Japan from a Buddhist perspective rather than the primordial Shinto one. One day we will talk about Shintotsu, uh, but that day isn't today. And uh, a final note before we move on, if you are interested in reading either of these books, I suggest Neon Shoki, as it's an easier read. The Kojiki is very descriptive, which means that a large part of the text is covered by names of entities, one after the other after the other. A lot of these many versions translate the names of these entities, which makes them even longer than the original names and sometimes a bit confusing. For example, the version of the Kojiki that I read translated the name of the famous deity Amaterasu to Heaven Shining Great August Deity. So let's talk about the myth of the creation of the heaven and earth. At first, heaven and earth existed together in a chaotic mass with a vaguely oval shape. From this mass, the lighter, brighter and purer part rose to form heaven, or as it will be called from now on, Takama no Hare, the height plane of heaven, while the heavier and darker part came to form earth. The first three deities Kami were born in the Takame no Harem, Ame no Mi Nakam Nushi no Kami, Takami Muzibi no Kami, and Kami Muzobi no Kami. I know that these are very long names, but none of these three deities will be mentioned again, so you don't have to worry about that. At that time, the young earth was floating like a jellyfish on oil, and then something emerged from the space between the earth and heaven, like a reed, and that something became the Kami Umashi Ashi Kabi Ikoji no Kami and Ame no Tokotashi no Kami, which will also not be mentioned again. The Nayon Shoki introduces the concept of Yin and Yo, which are equivalent to the Yin and Yang principles. In the beginning, these two are not separate. When the primordial mass split into light and pure and heavy and dense, the heavy material, Yin or Yin, settled to form the earth, and the light material rose to form Heaven, Yo or Yang. Thus, Nayon Shoki explains that the first entities, having been created under the divine principle of heaven, Yo, were purely male, and the next, formed through the principles of heaven and earth combined, Yo and Yin, were generated in pairs, a male entity and its female sister. However, in Kojiki, there is no mention of the pure masculinity of the first entities, nor it is there any mention of Yin and Yo. 
In fact, before the entity started appearing in pairs with different sexes, it was mentioned that they were born alone and went into hiding after they were born, which could mean that they disappeared. We have already seen in the analysis of Spirited Away that the Japanese associate the verb hide with the concept of disappearance. As I mentioned it before, when talking about the Japanese writing systems, hiragana, katagana and kanji, the ancient Japanese, at a time when kojiki and neon shoki were written, used Chinese characters to create their documents, since written Japanese was still in its infancy. Relations between China and Japan were an undeniable reality. This may be why the neon shoki has these addictions to the narrative, resulting from the influence of Chinese philosophy. In any case, the Kojiki leads us to believe that the first deities, the first five already mentioned and the two that follow them, for a total of seven, arose spontaneously, had no defined sex, had no partners and, after their birth, went into hiding. They are therefore considered Itorigami. Itori is the Japanese word for alone or one person. The first three gods are give, were given the title of the three gods of creation, the first five the title Distinguished Heavenly Kami, and the twelve that follows them, two Itorigami and five male-female pairs, the name Seven Divine Generations. Of all these deities, two stand out, Izanagi, male Kami, and Izanami, female Kami. All the heavenly deities then ordered Izanagi and Izanami to make, consolidate and give birth to floating land. They were given a spear made out of heavenly jewels, which was called Ameno Nuoku, for this mission. In another version, Izanagi and Izanami themselves are the ones who decide to look for land, and the spear is not given to them but something that they already had. These two deities, standing on the floating bridge of heaven, Amano Ukiashi, plunged the spear into what was underneath and shook it. The brine that dripped from the tip of the spear, when it was retrieved, piled up and formed Onogoro Highland. Izanagi and Izanami decided to become husband and wife, and to live on the island they had created. In the center of Onogoro, they erected a pillar and courted each other. Each surrounded the pillar separately, Izanagi from the left and Izanami from the right. Izanami then asked Izanagi about the differences between their bodies. In my body, there is a place that is the source of masculinity, Izanagi says. In my body, there is a place that is the source of femininity, Izanami says. I wish to unite this place in my body with a place in your body, he says. The couple's first child is referred to in the texts as Lish. Dissatisfied with his son, they put him in a boat made of reeds and threw the boat into the sea. Then the island of Aha was created which was also a source of shame. After failing twice, Izanagi and Izanami consulted the elders and asked them if they knew how the situation could be resolved. They replied, the children are no good because the woman spoke first. Come down and amend your words. And so they did. This time Izanagi spoke first. What a lovely and fair maiden. And she replied, what a lovely and fair youth. Having learned how to procreate properly, Izanagi and Izanami had many children, the first of all the islands that constitute Japan, which are Aaji, considered the placenta, Yamato, Iyo, Tsukushi, and Oki and Sado, these last being considered twins. The islands of Tsushima and Iki were produced by the coagulation of saltwater foam. This creation phase of the Japanese archipelago is called Kuni Umi. Izanagi and Izanami then produce the sea, the rivers, the mountains, as well as the ancestor of trees, the ancestor of herbs, and everything else. Then they ask themselves, now that we have produced the country of the eight great islands with mountains, rivers, herbs and trees, shouldn't we produce someone to govern this country? From this point on, the narrations of the Kojiki and the Neon Shoki differ substantially from each other. According to the Nihon Shoki, it is at this moment that three of the most important Japanese deities are born, in order Amaterasu, the Kami of the Sun, the most important of all, Tsukiyomi, the Kami of the Moon, and finally Suzanuo, the Kami of the Seas. But in the Kojiki, these deities are not the first to appear. They are born much later in the story, being preceded by a myriad of other deities. Whatever the version, 
these successive births resulting from joint efforts of Izanagi and Izanami are called Kami Umi. It is said that the total number of islands produced by Izanagi and Izanami was 14, and that the number of deities created by the two was 35. And that number would have certainly been higher if it wasn't for the Kami of Fire. When Izanami gave birth to the Kami of Fire, Kagotsuchi, she got fatally burned. Sick and feverish, Izanami suffered until the hour of her death, and all her body fluids became Kami, her feces, her urine, and her vomit. So, as it's clear from this part of the story, in Japanese mythology, a Kami doesn't necessarily have to be conceived in the traditional way. Izanami created several Kami on her deathbed, and nothing in the text suggests that it was intentional, but rather something that just happened. And it will happen again, as you will see. However, I can help but to wonder why, if it's a spontaneous process for the secretions of one Kami to become another Kami, this didn't happen before. And by analyzing this and the following passages in which the phenomenon is repeated, my hypothesis is that the accidental creation of Kami is linked to strong emotions experienced by a deity. Izanami produced all those Kami under atrocious suffering. And when Izanagi realized that his beloved was dead, he cried, Oh, that I have lost my beloved sister in exchange for a single child. And then he cried at her feet, and his tears also became Kami. In fury, Izanagi drew the ten palms sword he carried at his waist, and cut Kagotsuchi into three parts according to the Neon Shoki into many more according to the Kojiki. The blood of the fire Kami also gave rise to various other Kami, as it flowed from the tip of the blade to the fingers with which Izanagi held the sword. Izanami was buried in the village of Anima in Kumano, Ki province. During the flower season, the inhabitants of this province pay homage to the goddess through flower offerings, songs, dances, and the use of drums, flutes, and flags. But if you think that Izanagi chose to accept Izanami's death, you are mistaken. Izanagi decided to fetch Izanami from the land of Yomi, the world of the dead. Which is not surprising, because this kind of event happens all the time in mythology. But I will continue this story in another time, so if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe or to come check it out. I post weekly. And next week, I, I will talk about Izanagi and his journey to the underworld. See you there. Bye.